Okay. Last week, remember back in Matthew 21, verse 19, about the fig tree that died? Jesus walked by it, and because it didn't have no fruit on it, he, uh, he made it wither. It, this represented it, uh, the Christians. Christians without no, no fruit are Christians that are not doing the will of God. They're not doing the will of God because we are we're supposed to produce fruit in our life. We learned last week our fruits are what we do, our works that doesn't save us, but we do these works because we are saved. And then our ministry, that's our other fruits that we have. So this tree didn't this fig tree didn't have anything, so it withered away. And the wither withered away means in Mark's account, the same fig tree that it's speaking about. It says, the fig tree which thou cursed. So he cursed this fig tree. He cursed this Christian because this Christian wasn't doing anything for him. He was not in God's will. He just didn't do anything. Now, this is speaking about Israel. For us today, Romans 10, 2, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. You know, this fig tree, it was a Christian but he didn't have anything. Had no works, didn't do anything. But the Lord's saying, I bear them record that they have the zeal. People have the zeal, but not according to knowledge. Paul is, is a witness to this from the Jews, because he, he was always around the Jews. They were sincere in what they believed. They were sincere about it, but they didn't know the truth of the Lord. They didn't know the truth. And because they didn't know the truth, who did they follow? The religious leaders that were lost. Because they didn't know the truth. And the reason they didn't know the truth was why? They didn't read the words of God. They were spiritually blind. Because they didn't see Jesus. Oh, they had followed. Jesus had a big following, but why? Because he was feeding them. Because he was healing them. They were receiving these things from Jesus. And oh yeah, uh, they followed him. But were they following him because he was Lord? Was they following him because he was the Christ? Was they following him because he was the son of God? They had spiritual blindness. Thinking they were doing God's will by following him. But for the wrong reasons. Their motives were wrong. Just like I said last week. Can we hide anything from the Lord? Nothing. The Lord says, I see everything. He says, I know your motives. Amen? amen. Some of y'all might not be saying amen because you, you don't want him to know your motives. But guess what? He knows them. And if you think you're hiding something from the Lord, nix. Not happening. Like I said last week, you might be hiding them from people, us, but we cannot hide nothing from the Lord. Nothing. I love the Lord, and that's why I walk with him, because I love him. But that helps me a little, too, knowing he knows everything I do. And he knows why I do it. So I better do it right, right? Amen. Now, this is what happens when a believer is spiritually dead. A believer, but they're spiritually dead. In verse 5, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. The spirit is saved. The man is saved. But he's not doing anything for the Lord. Nothing. So he handed him over to Satan for destruction. And destruction is, he's not going to have a, a, a blessed life from the Lord. Anything that's not a blessed life from the Lord is, is, is destruction. And that's what devil, the devil wants for us. He wants nothing but destruction for us, to destroy us. That's what he wants. And he does a lot of that with born again. This, this teaching is on born again believers, Christians who believe, but they live this way. Now, this is what the devil, the devil wants. He wants to separate us from God, our Father. That's what he wants. 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober. He's talking to, to us. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He wants to destroy you. 
He's, he's, he's not seeking lost people because they're already, they're already dead. He's seeking Christians here. He's looking for Christians that have a so-so walk with the Lord, so now he's going to come, come in and make it worse. He's looking for Christians that he can destroy. Like I said up here in the verse, not, not lose their salvation because I had a teaching of that. We can't lose our salvation. Once saved, always saved. It's true. But are you truly saved? Are you truly saved? That's the question. The believer who lived this way among the lost, the believers that live among the lost, it's because they're not growing. It's because they're not growing. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, wanting ill for people, that's what that means, and all guile, meaning being deceitful, and hypocrites, which we know what a hypocrite is. It's a fake. And envies, having jealousy, and all evil speaking, meaning they're liars. Wherefore, laying aside all this. Hey, Christian, lay all this aside because this is the way you live. You're doing either all of them or maybe just one of them. But he's telling the Christian, quit. Lay it aside. Put it behind you. The Lord wants us to get rid of this kind of living. As babies who don't know no better. A baby Christian might have these things, but as you grow, you get rid of these things. That's why it's not good to stay a baby. If you're not growing, you're going to stay a baby. And when you're a baby, you do things that is not of the Lord. In verse 2, as newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. The way we get rid of this kind of living is to grow. That's what it's saying. Amen. Is to grow. Who in here doesn't, don't raise my hand, but who in here doesn't has the, don't have the desire to grow? Just like last week, Psalms 1-1, the word of the God is a delight to us, a delight. Delight means we, we're, we want the word of God in us. We want to grow. That's our delight is to grow in the Lord. That's our delight. If, they, if you don't have that delight, you can't grow because you're going to, this is, you want to do it. Not that you have to do it. You want to do it because of what Jesus has done for you. Amen. Now, one of, the, one of the two things are going to happen. If you're not growing, sin will keep you from the Bible. I hope you heard that one. If you're not growing, sin is going to keep you from the Bible. But the other way around, if you're growing, it's because you're reading the Bible, and the Bible will keep you from sin. Amen? Amen. Ha, praise God. Part of the reason we're not growing is because we're thinking that we're taking spiritual food in, junk food. I mean, not spiritual food, spiritual junk food. I'm talking about these false preachers on TV, these <laughs> lying preachers out there. That's why I suggest that young Christians don't watch TV in. Half of their half of what's on there, and I'm giving it a benefit of the doubt, half of it is men of God. But the other half are wolves. But one of the reasons we don't grow is because we're taking in junk spiritual food, listening to false preachers. That's junk, okay? That's part of the reason we don't grow. They're supposedly be Christians, but they don't give you the word of God. They have their own opinion on what the word of God says. And when people don't read the word, how do they know they're lying? They don't. They just receive it. Because he has a title, pastor, preacher, or whatever, they, they take it in. We need to pray to the Lord and ask him to give us a godly man. Pray for the Lord. Pray. I mean, when, I, when this ministry started, it started at home, me preaching to my wife because that was my responsibility. But then I needed someone I could talk to. I needed a man, a, a man of God that I could talk to. And I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, I, need a, I didn't pray for a church. I prayed for a godly man. He gave me one. I don't like the church I'm in, but he gave me a godly man. He gave me a man full of the spirit. Amen? Amen? 
And because of that, that's why I go there. It's not because I'm Baptist and I like the Baptist church. No. I really don't like the Baptist church. I really don't. There's good people in there and there's some good Christians in there. But the main reason I don't like the Baptist church because they don't know how to get excited over the Lord. There's excitement over the Lord. When the Lord is speaking to us in Scripture, speaking to us, that's how he speaks to us. We, get, we should be getting excited because he tells us a lot of good things. That son, not this last Sunday, but the Sunday before, I uh, went to another Baptist church. But this one was a black Baptist church. Oh, my gosh. They were praising the Lord. They were praising the Lord. And my spirit, I have discernment. The Lord has given me discernment. I know when, I'm, when someone is actually praising the Lord in spirit, and I know when they're just acting. I mean, the Lord gives us discernment. It's in the Bible. This, this church, those people were praising the Lord. There wasn't no quietness in there, being orderly like the Baptists say. Being orderly is getting excited over the Lord. That's being orderly, okay? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes don't listen to the preachers. Well, this church is today. It's getting to where you can't listen to them at all. It really is. It's, it's time for these proud sinners to step out of the church and quit embarrassing the Christians. Because when they claim to be Christian, but they're living like the lost, that's an embarrassment to us. That makes us look bad because the lost people say, well, and he's a Christian or and she's a Christian? Really? If you're not going to live for the Lord, don't say you're a Christian. Quit. Where I used to work, there was a guy there. When I was there, amen, praise God, talked about the Lord. But when I wasn't there, he was telling dirty jokes along with the lost people. And they, they're the ones who told me. I didn't know that. They told me. They said, when you're here, he talks about the Lord. But when, he, when you're not here, he's out there turning, the, telling uh, dirty jokes. Hey, if you're not going to walk with the Lord, don't claim to be a Christian. Please. If you're a baby Christian and you've been a baby Christian for years, it's time to grow up. It's time to take off your diapers and start eating milk and put your pants on and walk with the Lord. Amen? It's time for that. Being a baby all the time is not a good thing. You don't please the Lord that way. That sounds mean. Well, guess what? It's the truth. Now, the problem with baby Christians are religious people. They don't want to die to self. We talked a little bit about that last week. They don't want to die to self. This is in Revelation 3, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verses 15, 16, and then verse 21. Verse 15 says, I know thy works. This is Jesus speaking. Now, listen. This is Jesus speaking. This is not Jesse speaking. This is the Lord. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Is that what the Lord, is that what we want the Lord to do, do to us? Because we're lukewarm. Lukewarm means, oh, sometimes we're Christians, amen, praise the Lord. But then sometimes we, we, we fit in with the lost people. We fit in with them. How does the light fit in with darkness? It don't. And the Lord said, when you're this way, I'd rather just spit you out of my mouth. That's what he said, right? This is what Jesus said. I'm not saying this. Jesus said it. I believe these religious people, which also can be believers, they, don't, they just don't walk with the Lord. And a lot of them know the word of God, but don't live it. There are a lot of Christians out there, Christians, who know the words of God, but they don't live it. That's lukewarm. So if you're lukewarm, if, if these words are speaking to you, repent. Repent or the Lord is going to spit you out of his mouth. This is not a, a, a loving teaching. 
He's not proud of Christian sinners, which they are proud to be Christian sinners, but he's not. And I'm showing you his words. So if you're being a hypocrite, quit. It's just time to quit. These people are like, they're too good to go to heaven. I mean, they're too good to go to hell. But they're not that bad to go to hell. Uh, they're too good to, to go to hell. But they're not that good where they're going to go to heaven. Luke 1. They're like, they're, and there is no middle. We know that, right? There's no purgatory. Like some religions believe, there is no purgatory. It's not in the Bible. So there's not no middle ground. You're either in or you're out. That's it. So if you want to walk with the Lord, the Lord said in Amos 3.3, 3, how can two walk together? How can we walk with the Lord unless we're in agreement? That's what he says. How can you walk with him unless you're in agreement with him? We have to be in agreement with everything the Lord shows us in his word. Whether we like it or not, we need to believe it and receive it. Amen? Hosanna 6.4, the Lord says, Israel, what should I do with you? Judah, what should I do with you? Your faithfulness is like morning mist, like the dew that goes away early in the morning. In the morning, what do we have? A mist out there. But by, by mid-morning, where is it at? It's gone. We, well, that's what he's saying about the Christians here. In the morning, yeah, you're there, but for, where are you at the rest of the day? Y'all hear that? They mean well, but then the devil comes along with his temptations, and he takes it all away from you. He takes it away from you. And why is he taking it away from you? We know already why. And the reason he takes it away from you is because you have, we have allowed him to take it away. Remember, if you're a born-again Christian, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And who's in you? Jesus. Who is in the world? The devil. Greater is Jesus than the devil. So if you fall to the devil, it's because you have allowed it to do it. It's not that he's stronger than the Lord. Y'all hear that? He is not stronger than the Lord. You have the power to overcome temptations. They don't realize that the Lord says, part of the reason... We're lukewarm. Part of the reason is because we're like the Jews. The Lord, the Lord took the Jews out of Egypt. They were slaves. Hey, he freed them from that. He freed them from that. He says, now I'm going to take you to the promised land. Milk and honey. Amen. It's like us when we're lost. He frees us from, from, the, from the temptations of the devil. From the devil being our father. He freed us from that. And he says now I have heaven for you. But just like the Jews. They got to the promised land. They said. Oh, there's too many giants there. They didn't go. They didn't go. Are we doing that? We get born again. The Lord sets us free. But when it's time to do his will. His heavenly will which is what we're supposed to, how we're supposed to be living, we decided we don't want it. Y'all hear me? You hear me, Daryl? We decided we don't want it. He wanted to give them the promised land, promise land, meaning if the promised land had everything they needed. Do we have everything we need? Amen. Amen. The, Lord, the Lord gives us everything we need. Just remember, need and wants are two different things. And he gives us our wants. But for sure, he gives us our needs. Amen. Amen. They refuse his blessings. They refuse the blessings the Lord wants. That's what happens to us. Born again Christians. We don't obey him. We don't listen to him. We're refusing him from blessing us. Y'all got that? I don't want to refuse the Lord from any blessings on me. <laughs> and my life shows it. The Lord has blessed me tremendously. Amen. Our promised land is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's our promised land. 
so we can receive the power and the blessings. That's what the Holy Spirit is. It gives us power. The power to follow the Lord, to obey the Lord. Amen? Second Peter 1, 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that he hath called us to glory and virtue. The Lord has called us to be his way. That's what he wants from us. Why does the Lord want that from us? Because he loves us so much. He loves us so much. I mean, the Lord is, he wants to pour down blessings on us. He wants to. He can't wait to pour down blessings on us. And all we have to do is obey. Is it really that hard to obey him? Not really. Especially when you have the power of the Holy Spirit. If you love the Lord, if you love the Lord, it's not hard to obey him. Okay? Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that I would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ might dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend all <clears throat> saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that might be filled of all fullness of God. Luke to Christians, lukewarm Christians don't live this way. The fullness of don't don't we want the fullness of the Lord? Do we know what the fullness of the Lord is? Peace, happiness. I mean, I can I can just go on and on. But that's the fullness of the Lord. Having peace in your life, having rest in your life, being happy, joyful. Uh, nothing gets to us. Nothing gets to us. It's like with my little girl. Oh, yeah, I mourn, but God was God. He is God. He told me it rained on the just and the unjust. Well, it rained on me, but he was still my God. I did not turn from him. I did not curse him. He was still my God because he told me when I first got born again, what happens to the lost can happen to you too. Lukewarm Christians cannot live there this way. They're happy, but they're happy in the wrong way. Oh, yeah, give me another one. You know, drugs, whatever. That's, that's what makes them happy, but it's the wrong happiness. I know, because I used to be there. I thought I was happy. I come to find out that is not happiness. Being having hangovers, there ain't nothing happy about having a hangover. <laughs> now, if you put the Lord first before any religion and obey his commands, the next verse is for us, okay? Verse 21, he says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Huh? Uh, I gave you a big chance right there to say amen. To those who overcome, he's going to let us sit with him on his throne, on his throne. Amen. We're not just going to heaven. We're going to sit with him on his throne. Even as I also overcame and I'm set down with my father on his throne, just like Jesus is sitting next to the father on his throne, we're going to sit next to Jesus on his throne. Amen. God, if that doesn't excite you, wake up. Wake up, that's all I can say. We will look more and more like our Lord Jesus when we overcome. And we can overcome, we can, over, we can overcome because of why? Of him that lives in us. Amen? That's why we can do it. The problem with this church is they don't want even, they don't even know they're lukewarm. It's not preached in the church. You don't hear this in the church. And I I go to church. I have a church that I go to. But I listen to a lot of preachers on TV. Preachers, men of God, not just anybody. I listen to men of God, 
men of God, but they, you, there's some things you just don't hear preachers preach on. And this is one of them. Lukewarm. Preachers today, even men of God, they don't want to offend anybody. They don't want to offend them. Because some of them, some of them, I said some, they, they want a big church. And you're not going to have a big church when you're given the truth of God. You're not. Because like I said last week, he steps on toes. Now who wants to, get, who wants to go to a church where your toes are getting stepped on all the time? Because if the man is preaching the word of God, then your toes are going to be stepped on all the time. Because we're not there. But you got men of God, I'm talking about men of God, who preach this way because that's one reason. Another reason, I hate to say it, but you make them happy when you're preaching, you get more of this. You get more tithe money. Christian men, Christian born-again believers, preachers, you know, we all have faults. We all have faults. And if they're doing it for this, well, the Lord will show them, hey, quit being money hungry. If they want to be popular and have a big church, hey, put your pride aside. That's pride. The Lord will speak to them. He'll speak to them. Even going to Bible study like Sunday school, they receive his words here. Here. Not here. And I hope that doesn't happen in this church here. I pray to God that every time we read scriptures, it's going here. Not here. Here. If it goes here, praise God, you're receiving his words. And when you receive them here in the heart, amen. Amen. You will live a glorious life. You will. Because the Lord didn't bring us here to live a sad life. He brought us here. He got us saved so we can live in joy and peace. Amen. Amen. That's the Lord. The Lord says, a lukewarm Christian in Romans 10, 21. But to Israel, he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainslaying people. The Lord is always, these are born again Christians. He's reaching out to them. Hey, why are you living this way? Why are you living a defeated life? We can be living in victory. But instead, you're disobedient to me. And there's nothing I can do with you when you're disobedient. I can't bless you for being disobedient, can I? No, he can't. He's always ready to forgive us. Always ready. That's what I'm saying. If any of this stuff fits you, if any of this fits you, just drop on your knees now when you get home, but drop on your knees and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. You, you have revealed to me what I'm doing. And he does this all the time for us because he wants us to be better. He wants us to be like him. Amen. <laughs> they don't obey the Lord like the devil didn't obey the Lord. Is that, is that, is that who you want to fit in with? The devil didn't want to obey the Lord. And if you're doing the same thing, not obeying his words, well, you're right there with him. Y'all hear me? Proud sinners think they know it all. They really do. That they really don't need to be hungry for the word of God. They don't need to be hungry for the word of God. They got born again. They went up there, got baptized, got saved. Why well, want to be hungry for the word of God? I'll just go to church on Sunday. This is in the flesh. These are Christians that are in the flesh. That's how they think. They're not hungry for the word of God. They're not hungry for it. They don't go to church. This is a church, right? Those of you who come here, y'all consider this to be y'all's church. So this is y'all's church, y'all in church. But there's Christians out there that don't go to church at all. They don't go to church. They don't go to Bible study. And they're Christians. They're like they're sick. They're like, uh, and it's mainly women that I know of. They're they're like just flesh, flesh on bones. Uh, what do you call it? NRS. NRS. Yeah, that's what they are. But they won't admit to it. 
Well, that's what the Christians, born again Christians who are, are not walking with the Lord. Oh, I'm, I'm a Christian. But they won't admit, but I'm not a, a, a follower. They won't admit that. Oh, I'm a Christian. Yeah. What if I find out what a Christian is? Because you're not walking it. And also, just like the lost, they deny the Lord. I'll tell you, there's many ways that we deny the Lord. Not just, oh, I don't want him. I don't, I don't want him as my Savior. No, there's other ways that we deny him as, as Christians. We deny him. Not much different from the lost people, is that? Think about it. Believers put almost everything they have to do before the Lord. Now, I'm going to be touching a lot of people here. Luke 10, verses 39 through 42. And, and she had a sister called Mary. She also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Jesus came to these people's house. Okay? Verse 40. But Martha, which Martha and Mary, they're both Christians. Okay? They both love the Lord. But Martha was crumbled, meaning distracted, about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, doesn't thou care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her before that she help me. So Martha was getting everything ready, finding it very important that she has everything ready because Jesus was coming. Well, Mary, she just wanted to be at Jesus' feet to hear his words. That's what she wanted. Amen? Amen. Distracted means we are drawn away from one thing or another. Bible study. I know y'all if y'all have invited people to this Bible study, to this church, where are they at? Where are they at? They're distracted. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, I got a game. Oh, I got to watch this on TV. Whatever. They're distracted from being, getting close to the Lord. Which, it's only, it's only going to bring confusion into their life because when you're not close to the Lord, who's the author of confusion? All right? Verse 41. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. And this is what Jesus told Martha. Jesus told Martha that she is anxious and worried and upset about many things because they're not going her way. Well, I had this plan. I had that. Oh, wait a minute. I'm Jesus. I'm before all. Amen. What? Oh, wait a minute. Let me say that again. Maybe you didn't hear that. I'm Jesus, and I'm before all. Did I say some things? No, I didn't. The Lord didn't say that. The Lord said he wants all of our soul, all of our heart, soul, and mind. He's the one that said all. So I'm saying all. We're, gonna, we're being troubled. We don't like being pulled away from our regular routine. A lot of people don't like that. We don't like it. Well, this is what I do every whatever at this time, blah, blah. Uh, sorry, but the Lord's not in there. Y'all hear me? You know how many born again Christians, Christians that live this way? They don't have time. But what if God didn't have time to give you the air that you're breathing right now? What if he didn't have time for that? What if he didn't feel like sending his son to come and die for you? What if he didn't feel like sending his son? Y'all hear me? Because of living this way, when we have a choice of giving the Lord our time, we have, we have that choice. Give the Lord our time. Or give ourselves that time. We have a choice. And right now, guess who's winning? Self. Self is winning. Do you see why I call this proud Christian sinners? When this is happening in our life, we miss the Lord. 
We miss his guidance in life. We need his guidance. He's our lamp, right? He's our lamp. He orders our footsteps. But if we don't give him no time, how are we going to know what his footsteps are for us? We fail to take advantage of this priceless, priceless guidance that we have by the Lord. It's priceless to be guided by the Lord. Amen? It's priceless. But we don't take it. Martha became angry for the things not going her way. Even to the point she said to Jesus, do you not care? Really? Telling Jesus, don't you care? Jesus couldn't show more care for us than hang, been suffering and getting killed on the cross for us. This is one of the most foolish things a person can say. Jesus, don't you care? And believe it or not, Christians say that. They do. There's a word I can use, but I don't think I'm going to use it. But it is a foolish thing to say. When we do this, we're showing our will is more important. Our will is more important than hearing the words of God. Because Je there, Mary was with Jesus to hear him. Here, we have the Bible, which is Jesus, right? His words. So the Bible is Jesus speaking to us. And where we want to be when he's speaking? We want to be right there with him. At his feet. Just like last week when I said about this, that the woman that was a sinner. She couldn't even face Jesus because she, was a, she knew she was a sinner. But she humbled herself to him. She humbled herself by kissing his feet. And that's what we should do. When we know we're, we're sinning or we're living as a sinner. Sinner means you're is continually then we need to fall at his feet, kiss his feet, and say, Lord, forgive me. Amen? Amen. Is there, is there, is there anything more important than being with Jesus? Is Jesus here in this church? Yes, he is. Why? Because we're reading his words. His words. He's the one speaking. Amen? Amen. The Lord says when we... Living that way, Isaiah twenty eight sixteen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God: Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Amen. The word haste means you won't be doing things in a hurry. That's what haste. That's what it means. You're doing things in a hurry, and you don't ever have time for the Lord. That's what that means. You're always in a hurry. You're not thinking. You're not thinking about it before you act. Before you know it, you're tired. It's ready to go. You're ready to go to bed, and you think. Then you think, Oh man, I didn't give no time to the Lord. Well, that's because you were making haste. You were in a hurry. The word trouble means you have your mind on many things. And they trouble you. They, they worry you. They upset you. They frustrate you. That's the word, what the word trouble means there. Is this the way you want to live? That's what the way Mary, uh, Martha was living. This is why the Lord said in the next verse, put your mind on one thing that is needful. That's what he says. Put your mind on one thing that is needful. People, or being upset, like I said, worrying about everything. What's the Lord say in Matthew? I forgot what chapter it was, but what's he say in Matthew? He says, not to worry. Why? If he's Lord of your life, then that means what? He's running your life. And if he's running your life, do you have any need to worry? The master is in control if we allow him. We, let, we watch TV, especially now. Uh, what party is telling the truth? 
Is it the Democrats? Is it the Republicans? I mean, things on TV are going to get you all worried and upset. Not only that, there's other things on TV. The war that's going on right now, Russia and uh, Ukraine or whatever it is, that worries people. Well, quit watching the junk on TV. That's not good news. Your Bible is good news. Gospel means good news. Why are you watching bad news? Y'all hear me? We don't have to worry about all We don't have to worry about being a Republican or a Democrat or any kind of party. We don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about what's going on over there, the war. Because the, at the end time, the Lord said there's going to be wars and rumors of war. So that's going to be going on, right? Well, why are we going to worry about it? But the good news, the good news, this is the best news you can ever receive. Quit watching the TV. The devil uses that TV big time, big time. I think it was last week or the week before, I told you about like two and a half men. Uh, movies like that, oh, they're funny. They're funny. A lot of people watch them. But it's all sin. The whole thing is about sin. Walking Dead. Very popular movie. Why should Christians watch something Walking Dead? You want to watch Walking Dead? Just go outside and look outside. Because there's a lot of Walking Dead. Y'all hear me? A lot of people out there are Walking Dead. Don't worry about what's going on in the world. Don't worry about it. The Lord says we're not citizens of the world anymore, right? We're citizens of heaven. We're ambassadors. Ambassadors, all right? We're just here to represent the Lord now. We're no longer of the world, right? So why are we all worried about it? This is what Martha, I'm just saying, then Martha was worried about all kind of things. The Lord said, hey, there's only one thing needful, and that's him. The Lord tells us in John 14, 1, let your heart, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Let your not heart, let, don't let your heart be troubled. Watch the news. Go ahead, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock, go ahead and watch the news. Guess what? Your heart's going to be troubled. The Lord right here says, don't let it be. Don't let it be. Verse 41. But one, this is Jesus speaking, but one thing is needful. This is what he's telling Martha. But one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Mary chose the good thing that was needful. Him. That's what he's telling us. Don't be needful for these other things. There's only one thing that we need. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. I love the name Jesus. I can say Jesus all night long. I just love that name. I'm sorry, but... No, I'm not sorry, but I love saying Jesus. I love saying Jesus. One thing is needful. What does one mean? One means one, only. Jesus is the only thing needful. Amen. I'm sure Martha thought what she was doing was important. I'm sure that's what she thought, just like the rest of us. But Jesus says there's only one thing that's important. There's only one thing important. More important than anything else. More important than anything else. Sometimes I have to repeat what I'm saying because I'm not sure if you heard me the first time. More important than anything else. But Christians that don't walk with the Lord, they find everything else to be more important than the Lord. Us getting to know him. What's more important than that? Us getting to know him at Bible study, at church, or at home? Husbands, fathers, leading the wife and the children to the Lord? What's more important to the wife and to the kids? What's more important than knowing about Jesus, who your Lord is? What's more important than that? Baseball? School? Y'all think about the things that Jesus is saying here. There's only one thing needful. And we don't let anyone take that away from us. 
to learning about Jesus. He's our number one priority. Amen? Number one priority in our life. Now, we have all his benefits. <laughs> we have all his benefits. Colossians 2.10. And ye are complete in him. What are we? Complete. Oh, my gosh. We are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power. He is the head of the, the president, any government out there. He's the head of everything. We don't, we don't pray for power. We have it. Oh, Lord, give me the power. What? I gave it to you. I told you I gave it to you. So don't pray for it. You have it. Amen? Yeah, praise God. Don't pray for rest. He's given us rest. He is rest. Amen? So don't pray for it. You got it. <laughs> you know, and, and like we had a teaching on, on he gives everyone as a gift, right? We all have gifts from the Lord. Don't pray for it. You got it. You know, you might have to pray and say, what is it? But don't pray for it. You just need to find out what is it. Amen. Living for the Lord is great. Awesome. Awesome. I've realized that. I have. And I hope y'all are too. How awesome it is to live. To live. Not say to live a Christian life. To do what he tells us to do. We don't pray for victory in our lives. We already have it. Right? Right? We, are, we all know in here what Revelation says. We win. So do we have to pray for victory? Now in our battles, in our battles, we have victory over those too. In the battles, we have victory over those. Because why? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus. Amen. Amen. John 10.10 10. I am come that they might have life. Why did Jesus come? So we could have life. Life. What did he say? How we were living when we didn't know him? We were dead. That's what he said. We were dead. But now I come that they might have life. Amen. Praise God. And they might have it more abundantly. He don't want to just give us life. He wants us to have more than what we can handle. Amen. Isn't that a life you want, that we want? Mm -hmm. To be so happy that, okay, Lord, I can't take much more. <laughs> I don't know if it'll ever get to that, but he wants to give us as much blessings and life as we are ready to receive. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> Jesus is saying, now, now is the time to live this way. Now. Not, don't wait till you get to heaven. Of course, heaven is going to be that way. But we can live that way now. The kingdom is upon us. Well, who was the kingdom? Jesus. So if Jesus is the kingdom, where does Jesus live? Inside of us. So do we have the kingdom now? Amen. Praise God. Believe that we are complete in him now. Not later. Now. Now we can live this way. Amen. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 6 1. We then, as workers together with him, with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. In vain. That means we're not doing nothing with it. He's given us this victory, this glory, this grace, this love, this power, and we're doing nothing with it. That's what he's saying. We then means what we just said in verse in the verse above. Because now we have his righteousness, his kingdom. Now. God, we got to believe that. Spiritually, we're already in heaven. Amen. Spiritually. Come on, people. Spiritually, we're in heaven. Praise God. Ah, I should be hearing so many amens, y'all going to drown me out. I mean, is the Lord blessing us and telling us great things here? Man. Don't let suffering and dying on the cross. 
you know, the Catholics, and I'll have to bring them up, I think they're the only ones that have Jesus on the cross. Who wants to see Jesus still on the cross? The devil. Christians, we carry, we have crosses that don't have Jesus on it. Why? Because he defeated the grave. He defeated the devil. He defeated death. That's why he's not on the cross no more. But you have this religion out there. That they got these crosses with Jesus. That's not the way I want to remember Jesus. I want to remember him as being victorious, defeating hell. Amen. Praise God. Don't be like Martha. Be like Mary. <laughs> Put Jesus first. Put Jesus first. Let go of any kind of whatever you're worrying about. Let it go. Just give it to Jesus. That's what he wants. You got a problem? Give it to me. Right? He wants our problems. Big, small, he wants them. So we can walk in peace and rest. Amen. Praise God. Matthew 6, 26. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they weep, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? <laughs> when we allow the Lord to feed us, we're growing. We're growing. When we're grown, we don't have time to worry. Did y'all hear that? When we are grown, we don't have time to worry. <laughs> Amen. God is good, man. Ooh. Now, verse 28, Jesus says, look at the flowers of the field. They grow because they don't worry about the things the Lord has already given them. Proud sinners don't, don't run from sin also. That's another thing. Adam and Eve chose to sin, right? They chose. They didn't run from it. They chose to, to sin. They chose it. Aaron, right under Moses, Aaron, chose to sin by uh, making them a calf to worship. He chose to do that. He chose to sin. He didn't flee from it. These are sins we can flee from. Eve should have fleed from the devil when he tempted her with a lie, with a lie. She should have fleed. Aaron should have said no, no, and fleed wherever he had to go. Samson chose to listen to the woman. Man of God, the Lord used him, but then he listened to a woman. Judas chose to go on his own reasoning, thinking, okay, well, Jesus, Jesus that and Jesus this, and he thought it was a good thing if he'd report to the religious leaders where he's at and everything. We're going to watch what we choose in our life. We have to watch it. Lord, what, what does the Lord say about this or that? We need, that's why he says uh, on the Lord's Supper, we need to remember these things. And that's why we have the Holy Spirit. That's why we had the Holy Spirit, because the, the Holy Spirit is there to give us remembrance. Amen? David, David chose to fall to temptation. He chose to. And what happened? Because he didn't flee, what happened? He committed adultery and he murdered. So when you don't flee from sin, listen to me, people. When we don't flee from sin, nothing good is going to come out of it. You all hear me? Nothing good is going to come out of not fleeing from sin. Run from it. This is what proud Christian sinners don't do. They don't flee from it. They, a man after God's own heart committed adultery and murder because he didn't run away from sin. He was so close to the Lord, he defeated Goliath, the giant. Oh, great David, the little boy, defeated the giant. That was David because of not fleeing from sin. It's great man of God which he still was, he did other things. But that, that one moment, he didn't flee. He didn't run from the sin. This great man of God, y'all, he listening to me. Please hear it. Run from sin. When it comes your way, run from it. 
He had victory over all the battles he was in. He was a man of God. But once he chose to go to the temptation, which is got, like I said last week, a little leaven leavens the whole lump, meaning a little sin will give you greater sin. Let a little sin in your life, and believe me, the devil will take it and run with it. Look at Peter. Peter. The rock. That's what he was called. That's what Jesus called him, right? This rock denied Jesus three times. This rock. Because of what? Because of a little girl. A little girl. Hey, aren't you one of those? Well, I'm not. A little girl. Run from sin. Temptation comes constantly with us believers. We're always being tempted, okay? Like I said, the devil is seeking us. He's not seeking the lost people because they're lost already. He's seeking us, the Christians, to destroy. The Lord said, when you see it coming, to run. That's what he said. 1 Corinthians 6.18, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication, fornication sinneth against his own body. The Lord is speaking about sin in general, okay, not just fornication. There's a way to escape it. The Lord has always given us a way to escape sin, always. If sin comes your way, the Lord does not say, uh, I don't know what you're going to do. Avoid sin, people. Avoid it. And we see it when it's coming. If you're a born-again believer and you're walking with the Lord, you know when sin is coming your way. You know it. And don't act like an idiot. Well, I didn't. No, you did. Run from any kind of, any kind of uncleanness. Anything that's evil, run from it. Just get, just, just, I mean, that's all I can say. Well, well, Jesse, where do you want us to run? <laughs> well, what does James say? The best way to fight Satan is to what? Get to, to get closer to him. Run to him. Yeah. That's who you run to. You're not just running down the street. Ah, no, you're running to the Lord because that's where our strength is, right? Yeah. Praise God. We need to be like Joseph. When the wife of the king wanted to have sex with him, Joseph with the 12 brothers, his dad was Jacob, Israel. Okay? Well, you know, his, his brothers sold him, and he went to Egypt. Well, anyway, he, he became right under the king, and the king's wife wanted to have sex with him. Genesis thirty nine twelve, And she caught him by his garments, saying, lie with me. She wanted to go to bed with this guy. She grabbed him by his clothes and said, come to bed with me. And he left his garments, he left his clothes in her hand and fled. Amen? He ran from temptation. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, now you see what I'm talking about? It was right there. Got a hold of him. But he he left his clothes to run away from it. Amen? God. Joseph is a, is a very good example on how we're, we're to be. Run from everything about it. All sin has some effect of destroying the body when it's talking about sex. There's all kinds of diseases out there. But there's other things. Drunkenness. Is drunkenness good for the body? Not only is it not good for your body, but it kills other people. Murder, same thing, and, and a lot of other stuff. A lot of sin hurts other people, kills other people. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 and 20. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, 
and ye are not your own. Who treats their body like it's your body? I used to. I used to. I ate all kind of junk that was not good for my body. I drank too much liquor, not good for my body. I smoked, not good for my body. Was I taking care of his body? I mean, I was lost then, but even now, as being born again, I don't drink, I don't smoke and all that, but I was eating totally bad. Was I taking care of his body? Remember, that's your body is no longer your body. Remember that. Watch what you put in it. Christians can't receive. They just can't receive. They, they have been bought. They, they have a hard time with that. But they've been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Verse 20. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. Glorify God in your body. And in your spirit, which are God's. The Holy Spirit. Is that yours? No, it's the Lord's. It's him. Amen. Praise God. The proud Christians seem, well, let me, uh, yeah, verse 20. Uh, the proud Christians seem to think that they can say, this is my body. That's proud Christians. Lost people don't know it. They don't know the word of God, but Christians know this. But Christians want to think, well, you know, this is my body. Uh, this is my house. This is my money. Everything to them is theirs. I'm talking about born-again Christians. But this is my time. You know, I can do what I want with my time. You gave all that up when you gave your heart to the Lord. If you didn't want to give all this up, then you didn't give your heart to the Lord. And don't say you did because you didn't. If this is the way you think, you didn't get. You did not give your heart to the Lord. This is my life. I can do what I want. No, you can't. It's no longer your life. It's the Lord's life. Amen. He gave us life. It's His life. I'm talking about proud Christians who are sinners. Now, if you fit any of these, like I said, if you fit any of these, see these knees. Praise God. Praise God for knees, okay? We just got to kneel on our knees and say, Lord, forgive me. I mean, from your heart. And if you really, truly love the Lord, you'll do that. If, we're, if you're guilty of any of the things we've been taught in this teaching, praise God. We just need to ask for forgiveness, but mean it, okay? The Lord didn't just buy our physical bodies. He bought us completely, completely. But many Christians don't want to submit to that. They don't want to submit to that. They like. They didn't die to self. Let's just put it that way. And if you don't die to self, can you? Can you live for the Lord? No. There's no way. Instead of us fleeing, it's the devil that should flee. Just like I said a while ago in James 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. This is what God said. Now, I told you I was going to be going over, so don't look at me like, hey, uh, do you know what that means? I'm going a little over tonight, okay? Now, instead of allowing sin to live in you, causing you to be separated from the Lord, isn't that what sin does to us? It separates us from the Lord. Psalms 51, verses 1 through 4, then verse 7 and verse 10. I'll try to talk fast. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Plot out, plot out my transgressions, my sins. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities, sin. Cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, now listen, against you and you only have I sinned. So when we sin, who we're sinning against? The Lord. It says it right here. And done this evil thing in thy sight, 
that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than, than snow. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. This is what we want. This is what we want. If, if, if you read this, what I just read, go home, read it again. And if it's, this is not touching you, then, okay? Like the Lord tells us, in, and we've read it before, Romans 12, 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Run from sin, hate it, and turn to the Lord, which is good. Amen? That's what it's saying. Proverbs 8, 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord is to hate e evil, pride, and arrogancy. And the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Do we have any of these? If we do, ask for forgiveness. It's so easy. But we got to mean it. He's always ready to forgive us. Amen. Psalms 97.10. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. How many times does he has to tell us this? If you love the Lord, hate evil. He preserved the soul of his saints. He delivered them out of the hands of the wicked. Is the God is God good to us or what? Oh, amen. We are to hate evil because the Lord hates evil. The Lord hates evil. That's why we should hate it. It was because of evil he had to send his son into the world. Amen. So does he like evil? No. He hates evil because, like I just said, he had to send Jesus Christ, his son, into the world to die for us. But religious people, religious people, and born-again Christians have accepted evil. I see it in the church. It's in the church. Like I, like I on the first, or my first teaching, it was God is not in the church. That's why he's knocking on the door at the church. He's not in there. So, born-again believers, they accept evil. That's in the churches today. Just as many Christians, not just the church, but many Christians also, they accept evil, sin. They accept, either they look at it, oh, it's not that bad. In God's eyes, sin is sin, period. No if, ands, or buts. We read in Matthew 22 that the Jews refused <clears throat> to come to the wedding. All right? So what did the Lord do? He told his disciples, well, invite whoever wants to come, even the Gentiles. Amen? Amen? Because of the stupidity of the Jews, we got salvation. Amen? Amen? Praise God. <laughs> Matthew 22, verses 11 through 13. And when... And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which not had the wedding garments. And he said unto him, These done, this is. Let me just read it. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servant, Bind him, hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into the outer darkness. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's hell. That's hell. When Christians know what they should be doing and don't, that's because they're taking, they have pride in their life. Like I said, they have more important things to do than to do it God's way. A lot of Christians are that way. The Lord wants to build people. Y'all hear me? He wants to build people for his glory. He made us for his glory, right? This is why he, he begs us. Ezekiel 33, 11. Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He doesn't, he doesn't like it when lost people die. He doesn't like it. But that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die of how, O house of Israel? So she's speaking to all of us, not just the house of Israel. 
He's like, why? Why are you dying in your sin? I'm, I want you. I'm nothing but a great, big, awesome benefit to you. Amen. Amen. Like I said, Israel is his people, right? Well, who's his people now? His people rejected him. So he said, well, go invite whoever wants to come to the wedding. So that's us. Amen. Now we're his people. Praise God. Now we need to walk with him. We need to walk. We need to believe him and walk with him. Or we'll be just like the lost. We'll be just like the Jews who were rebellious. Didn't believe him. When he said things to them, he didn't, they didn't believe him. He wants our love. He wants our love for him. Is that too much to ask for? After he gave his life for us? Not just give his life, but the man suffered tremendously. And I say man because that's what he was. He suffered. He wants believers. He wants believers. Not churches where some of them don't even have them in there. God wants people. He don't want to see how big of a church uh, someone can build, or a religion can build, or how big, beautiful, who can have the highest stamp, steeple, who can have the most stained windows, who can have the most crosses, who can have the most statues. That's not what he's looking for. He's looking for people to put him first. Amen? That's church. Church is believing in our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for speaking to us tonight. Thank you for showing whatever, whatever errors we're in so we can repent and ask for forgiveness, Lord. Thank you. Thank you that you're the almighty God, and thank you that your love for us is so great, so great, we can't understand it. We can't understand it because we know personally how we are. But you still love us. So thank you, Father. Thank you for being our Lord, our God, our Deliverer, our Savior, our Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I thank you for this teaching. Amen.